The Apostle Paul is without doubt the most important theologian in Christian history. Yet rarely do we think about the physical conditions Paul had to operate under to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. My name is Tim Foster, and in this series, I'm leading a small group of Ridley students for a study trip of a lifetime. Yeah, hang on! Please. We will be tracing Paul's missionary journeys, not just by land, but by sea. This is following in the wake of Paul. Hey, Phil. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. I just had a double shot espresso and it was really good. And I'm ready to now host the sales and put the motor down a full bore and away we go. For the last few days I've been travelling with a group of students from Ridley College along the southern coastline of Turkey. What's been exciting is that none of these students have stepped foot on a sailing boat before. The challenge is to learn to sail and to see whether they can sail a boat for themselves. We've got two yachts, the Pollux and the Sirius, which are out of Fedia in southern Turkey. One is helmed by myself and the other by Phil Muman, Senior Minister of Glen Waverley Anglican Church in suburban Melbourne. As we sail along this coastline, we're following in the footsteps of Paul, who sailed along here 2,000 years before us. We're going to call in at the same ports that he called in at, seeing ruins along the way and learning to sail. Well, with students settling into sailing life by day three, I decided it was time to mix things up a bit. Okay, so today you've been sailing for three days. So you're now, you've progressed through beginner to intermediate and now you're at expert level. So, Phil and I feel that we must decrease so that you may increase. And you guys need to get us to Gamela Island, St Nicholas Island where he was buried. Uh, you'll need to work out where it is, how you want to get there, all over to you guys, and when we're at Gamela Island, um, we'll, we'll take over again. Do you think it's a good idea? I think we're going to get very lost to a shipwreck. Okay. Five one nine. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't think it's a good idea. I think I think it's a poor decision on behalf of our skipper. I'm going to go out there with that. I think I think we're going to die. I think, it's, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea, especially you know, like if we're tracing in Paul's footsteps, the the risk of running aground is exactly what he faced. And so we want to put ourselves in that position as well. Phil and I manoeuvre the boats out in open water. And then it's time to hand the helm over to the students and our challenge begins. I'm starting to feel a little bit hesitant. I hope this was a good idea. It felt like a good idea when we were safely docked in port, but we're committed now. Straight away, Pollux found that it had problems with the boat's navigation system. Ah. Oh, that sun is so hot. Yeah, there there go. Go. Mate, if you want to get that going. No, I know, I'm, okay, yeah, you, you drive this. Yeah, I'll drive for a sec. We just want to... I'll be at the helm, knocks. I'll be the helmsman. Just want to knock this steel. Well, come okay, on, get on. The route in there, so six hours. Of 40 miles, guys, 40 Hang on, Scott, miles. do you want to do it just until I figure out where we're going? All right. That's six yeah, you decide, I decided we needed to vote in some leadership since we've lost our skipper Tim. So we've all taken a vote now and we've put Scott in charge as the captain of the ship. We've got Dave as first mate, Danielle and navigator. And, a navigator, and Danielle and I are assisting. We've given um, Tim the illustrious role of kitchen wench. We've secured him downstairs now. He needs to get permission to come up here. If I'm feeling pretty confident with our team. I think we're going to do really well. Yeah, well Sign me as captain. Yeah. I think it was a very oh, yeah. wise choice, personally. Ah, oh, because I've got a lot of leadership experience in police and army. I've, I've never actually sailed before, but other than that, I think I'm okay. So the uh, the guys are doing really well. They they've all got their jobs to do. They're really taking the the task I've given them seriously. The navigation has been great. They've been quite conservative, which is pretty well the right thing to do. They've kind of not cut any corners, not got too close to land, and they've been cautious of other boats that we've found out here. 
I like cooking, but not under these conditions. And also just, uh, it's an opportunity to serve them and, and give something back. And I think it's a great aspect of leader, leadership, serving people. Of course, our model for servant leadership is Jesus, who didn't come to be served, but to become a servant of many and, and give his life for them. And it's interesting that in secular, secular thinking, the idea of servant leadership has been kind of a big deal for the last 10 years, but Christians have had it for the last 2000 and Jesus is our model. So if we want to lead, sometimes it actually comes at personal cost. Meanwhile on Sirius, things are also starting to shape up nicely. The students have delegated themselves specific roles in operating the boat. Rod Morris, who's a senior minister, has volunteered to be the boat's captain who takes the helm and has assigned other boat's duties to various students. Ridley student Meredith is currently in charge of navigation and Clive, who's a retired pastor and plumber, takes the helm. Other duties have been assigned, such as cooking and generic boat operations. Everyone on board has a part to play. Uh, so we've had a fairly straightforward sailing morning. I'm not in a competitive spirit. Uh, this is about us uh, sailing and working to our ability and uh, enjoying our company. We've had some good conversations and uh, a delightful morning. We had a prayer session before we set, we, um, set off, so presumably that played a big impact in the fact that we're still alive. And apparently we were 45 minutes behind the other boat, which is Dr Foster's boat, so that was very disappointing. The students and Ponics are making good progress and are literally miles ahead of Sirius. Confident levels among the students are at an all-time high, but we all know that pride comes before the fall. Now the update is the other, as we thought, the others have stopped for lunch. Um, even though some of the crew, I think, are a bit peckish, a bit hungry, Dave and I have made a decision, first mate and myself, that we're going to press on for a bit more, get a bit of distance between us and them. We're loving the blue water. I don't know if you can see this, but it's the most stunning water that we've seen on trip. Beautiful aqua colour, beautiful beach off to our right. And why wouldn't you just take the opportunity to press further ahead? And we can't, we can't even see them. We look back there, they are that far behind us. We might, uh, we might as well not call it a race anymore. I think we could, uh, if they were handing out the, the Victor's Reef that we learned about, yeah. Uh, in Revelation, they, they would be ready to hand that to us now. So how important is it for you to win this race? Uh, look, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's probably sitting at about a 9, 9.5. This exercise was introduced to the students as a leadership challenge. No one ever mentioned that it would be a race, but with their huge lead, the students on Pelix have decided that the team can afford to take it easy anchoring a nearby cove for lunch. All right, drop it, Scott. Drop, Drop it! Drop! Drop! Drop. Yeah. <gasps> Ta-da! Ta-da! Oh, it's it. my Turkish-style casserole. Thank you, Chef. Fantastic. Uh, my pleasure. Please enjoy. I'll just go and get a serving implement. Our peaceful lunch was short-lived as students on the Sirius suddenly appeared around the headland, picking up speed and drawing ahead of Pollux. Fearing for their egos and ambitions, Team Pollux makes a hasty end to their lunch plans and pulls in the anchor. The situation is tense as she cuts her close to the land and the boats are now neck to neck. Over there. And then there's one in between. With the island destination now in sight, it's all hands on deck. 